Chapter One of Famous Assassinations of History by Francis Johnson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter One: Assassination of Philip of Macedon, 336 B.C. The assassination of Philip of Macedon, which occurred in the year 336 B.C., was one of the most important in ancient history, not only because it terminated the glorious career of one of the most remarkable men of his times, but also because it led immediately to the accession of Alexander, one of the supremely great men of history, an event which would very likely not have taken place at all if Philip had continued to live for a number of years and had himself selected the successor to his throne philip of macedon was then at the height of his power the battle of cheronea in 338 b c had made him the master of greece and by his tactful and generous treatment of the vanquished he had even been appointed by the amphictyon league commander-in-chief of all the greek forces which he intended to lead at the head of his macedonian army against the persians and to conquer their mighty empire this stupendous plan by whose accomplishment philip would have anticipated the glorious achievements of alexander his son was frustrated by his assassination while philip had arranged everything for his descent upon persia and had been frequently absent from home his domestic affairs in his own capital which had never been of a very satisfactory character took such an unfavourable turn as to require his personal attention as a husband philip had often given just cause of complaint to olympias his royal spouse wherever he went he formed liaisons and several illegitimate children were openly recognized by him as his own but when olympias the queen laid herself open to a suspicion of having violated her marriage vows in his absence he repudiated her charging her with gross infidelity and intimating that he had very strong doubts of being the father of alexander olympias thereupon went back to her native state epirus accompanied by alexander who was highly incensed at the treatment shown to his mother and himself philip contracted a second marriage with cleopatra a niece of attalus one of his generals and it is said that at the wedding feast attalus half intoxicated expressed the wish and hope that cleopatra might give the macedonians a lawful heir to the kingdom this remark overheard by alexander so enraged him that throwing a full cup at attalus's head he shouted to him what you scoundrel am i then a bastard whereupon philip taking attalus's part rose from his seat and rushing with his drawn sword upon alexander would have run his son through if he had not being himself more than half drunk with wine slipped and fallen on the floor at which sight alexander scornfully said see there the man who is making great preparations to invade asia at the head of a powerful army and who falls to the ground like a helpless child in going from one seat to another it is said that after this debauch both olympias and alexander retired from philip's capital the one going to epirus and the other to illyria by the counsels and efforts of demaratus the corinthian an old friend of the royal family philip was however induced to send for alexander and the son returned to his father's court soon afterwards cleopatra gave birth to a son and the fears of alexander who remained in communication with his mother and was filled with jealous rage by her revived it is more than likely although absolute proof of it has never been furnished that olympias in her revengeful jealousy planned the assassination of the king who had so cruelly offended her pride as a woman and who she supposed was also plotting to exclude her own son from the throne and place upon it the son of her young rival an opportunity for this act of revenge soon presented itself a young macedonian named pausanias had been mortally offended by attalus and queen cleopatra he appealed to the king for reparation of the wrong done to him but this being refused he resolved to revenge himself by taking the king's life 
all historians seem to agree that pausanias was encouraged and incited to this act of revenge by olympias but whether or not alexander was cognizant of the murderous plot and approved it has never been satisfactorily explained and remains one of the unsolved problems of history the occasion for the murderous act of pausanias was the wedding of alexander's sister with her uncle alexander king of epirus philip considered this marriage between his daughter and the brother of his first wife olympias an act of consummate statesmanship inasmuch as it transferred an enemy and an ally of olympias to his own side and made a friend of him he therefore resolved to make the nuptials of this ill-matched couple as brilliant as possible grand olympian games and spectacular festivities were arranged and an incredible display of luxury and pomp unheard of in those days was planned to show to the wondering eyes of greece the court of the new master of the civilized world in matchless splendor and grandeur all the cities of greece had sent delegations to these brilliant festivities most of them came with costly wedding presents among which golden crowns were conspicuous poets sent nuptial hymns and poems celebrating the beauty of the bride and the genius of the father in the most extravagant terms and a noted dramatist of that age neoptolemus composed a tragedy for the occasion in which philip under a fictitious name was represented as the conqueror of asia and the triumphant vanquisher of the great darius it was at the theatre in which this tragedy was to be performed that philip met his doom accompanied by a brilliant cortege of all that were renowned at his court for birth talent and wealth he proceeded to the theatre on approaching the entrance he bade the noblemen surrounding him to advance and his bodyguard to fall back so that he might be personally more conspicuous before the enraptured eyes of his subjects the procession was led by priests in white robes each carrying a statue of one of the twelve principal gods and a thirteenth statue even more richly draped and ornamented than the others with the insignia of divinity upon it was that of philip himself it was the supreme moment of his pride and happiness but it was also his last the noblemen and courtiers had already disappeared in the building the bodyguard obedient to the king's orders remained behind just at the moment when the king stepped forward alone under the gateway of the theatre a man sprang from a side corridor thrust a sharp short sword into his side and hurried off as the royal victim reeled and fell in the tremendous confusion which arose the assassin came very near making his escape he ran toward a swift horse which was kept in readiness for him by friends who evidently knew of the murder and were in on the plot and dazed as the people were who witnessed the assassination he would probably have escaped had not his sandal caught in a vine stalk and caused him to fall which gave some of his pursuers time to lay their hands on him before he could get up in their rage they killed him with their spears and tore him to pieces the surroundings and execution of this plot bear a strong resemblance to the assassination of abraham lincoln in both cases there was an individual murderer the scene was a theatre the act was done with incredible audacity in the presence of a large concourse of people and the murderer was crippled by a misstep after the fatal blow the assassination of philip of macedon was not only one of the boldest and most dramatic in history but it was also one of the earliest in point of time End of chapter one